everybody welcome back today i am going to do yet another halloween project i've been kind of sorting through my papers of what's left so that i could um hopefully do something else and i wanted to do these cute little treat bags i don't know if you've ever seen these before these have been around for like i don't even know i learned how to make these so so many years ago through a stampin up rep um and these were like all the rage because you can fill them with candy you can fill them with cookies you can fill them with jewelry handmade soap as long as you wrap it up um in like a parchment or or glassine or something like that um you can also put you know baked goods in here but just make sure they're wrapped because this is paper you don't want the paper getting stuck to your brownies or whatever it is you're putting in here these make adorable play settings if you're having people over um i i use them a lot <laughs> i'm not gonna lie these also are really cute for the winter time if you do a christmas theme and put a snowman on it and do the very famous snowman soup with the um, hot chocolate packet the marshmallows and a little baby candy cane fits perfectly in here you can put the little snowman soup directions on the front i opted to go for this little tiny um decoration that i used making two punches that i have a scalloped one and just a plain circle punch but when you see how easy this is this is going to be one of your go-to type of um projects because it's just it's so it's so easy and you know if you have to make a bunch of them you can just mass produce them and you get two out of one 12 by 12 piece of paper so the first thing you need is a double-sided sheet of paper 12 by 12 and you're going to cut it in half if you when you cut it in half you if you want to make two you have enough to make two because you only need a six inch piece so this is 12 inches long by six inches wide and the first thing we're going to do is stick this into our scoreboard and very easily we're going to score our first score is one and three quarters our next score is five and a half our next score is seven and a quarter and our next score is 11. when we rotate this into our scoreboard so that it's facing the opposite way now we have the six inch side on the top we're going to score at one and three quarters and five and a half very easy to do next we're just going to kind of prep our paper by folding all of our score lines and this just makes it easier for when we're making this little treat bag box whatever you want to call it um, to have everything scored and ready to go and then here's that really small score line and I like to do that front and back because it's so small um, so there we go okay now when you look at this with this small little space that we just folded keep this oriented that way so that when you look at this you have a really tiny box here and then you have a bigger box then a medium sized box a bigger box and then another box so yeah so basically this is the the um if we're looking at this this fold here is going to make one of the sides so this is the front this is a side this is the back and this is another side now all of these measurements these four look the same the only one that doesn't look the same is this one because this one has a shorter um a shorter score and a smaller square compared to the rest and i know it's hard to see so i'm going to show you this is where the score lines are there's one here and one here and you can definitely see this one is short this is the one that you want to cut completely out so you're going to cut this one out completely there we go. 
and just up to the score line. You're not going to cut the whole thing. You're just going to cut up to the score line. So there we have that. Now the next thing we're going to do is our next score line. We're going to cut from the bottom up to this score line right here. And we're going to continue on with all the rest of the bottom score lines. So I'm going to just take it and cut it up to that score line. I'm going to take this one. It's hard to see on this paper. So I'm just checking, checking myself. I'm going to cut. Okay. And then the last one here, I'm going to cut. I did that a little wrong, so I'm just going to take a little sliver off because that did not cut right, as you can see. But that's okay, because that's the bottom of the box. All right, so next you have to decide which way. You're always going to start with this piece here. So you have to decide which way you want your box to go. Now, I already did one with the pumpkins. So the next one I want to do is with the pumpkins on the inside. So how I'm going to change that up is I am going to fold this back this little piece here and I'm going to put tape on it and I'm going to glue this all the way around to the edge just like that now if I wanted to do the pumpkin side I would put the tape on it this way and just do that okay but we're doing it different because I want the opposite side now I'm going to use this tape runner If you're putting something heavy in this, you might not want to use tape runner. You might want to use your art glitter glue or Fabri-Tac, something that's a little bit maybe sturdier. But for this, I can use this and get away with it. All right, there we go. I'm just going to press that down so it has a good seal. And then when you... Just kind of moving my paper around a bit. Here we go. Here is our box. That is that simple. Now, here's just how you know the top from the bottom. The bottom has all these flaps and the top doesn't. What you're going to do is push your two baby flaps in. This one's going to go on and then this one's going to go on. Now, if you were putting something heavy in this, I would suggest that you glue here and here and push this down so that it's glued nice and then glue this so that you have multiple layers of glue. I'm not going to do that because if this is just a little treat box, I'm probably going to put candy in it. So I'm just going to use my tape runner again. But like I said, if you're going to put something heavy, you might want to think about using a different glue. runner for some reason my tape runner gives me a problem like not even dispensing glue well it did a little bit okay so there we go and here we go there's the bottom of our box Look at how quick that was. Okay. Now you do have a seam here from when we glued it all around. So I like to put my seam in the back. Now wait till you see how fast this, this gets, guys. You're going to pinch into each of these while holding these little edges. That might be too much of a pinch. Hold on. Pinch there. Pinch there. I'm, I'm just wiggling this a little bit and then you'll see that it concaves nicely on either side. Is that not adorable? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch. Now 
what you want to do is you want to punch through all of these layers if you punched it just in the middle you'd see that you'd have bulk here and bulk there and i don't want that so i'm going to punch through all three layers and you want to punch as close to this score line as possible if you punch it too high your punch is going to split apart and trust me it will because i already had that happen <laughs> so just so you know that's what will happen so let me just get this going it's a little little weird working with it but once you get your hands on it you're you're good to go so i like to push this i'm going to push this as far to that edge as i can and punch and then i'm going to do the same thing on this side far to the edge as I can punch through all layers see that one was a little bit higher but thank God it wasn't all the way down to there because we'd have a problem um, and then all you're gonna do is take whatever ribbon you like whether it be seam binding uh, holiday ribbon um, the only reason why I'm not using my Halloween ribbon is because it is not double-sided so I think I'll have a tricky time making a bow. So I'm just going to hold this to me. And I'm going to fold this down. Make a little bow here. And you don't have to make it too tight. Okay. There's my little ribbon. Here's my bow. And then just to add something to it, I already created another one of those little pieces. And I'm going to just put that right on the front with some foam tape. And then I'm going to just cut my edges here because I don't like when they do that. And there you have it. With one sheet of paper, you can make two of these sweet little boxes. I'll hold it up so that you can see them up close. They are so adorable. So much fun to make. And I really think they're a really cute way to present somebody with something. It just, it just goes the extra step. You know, I mean, you can just throw something in a little tiny gift bag or you can throw some you know throw something you know wrapped in something but i don't know i think this just gives it that extra little you know i really care and i took the time to even make the presentation perfect for your gift and i think that's what i love about these so i hope that you'll give them a try again don't think about just halloween think about christmas think about thanksgiving think about oh and you know the i think those mini loaf pans might they might fit in here if you kind of put them diagonal if you made like mini like date nut loaf bread or something like that they may fit in here as well i haven't tried that yet um but think of it for um valentine's day for birthday gifts for New Year's, I mean, this isn't just a Halloween craft. You can use a treat bag for anything. And so I wanted to, to do this with you guys and show you how fast and easy this is. And I, I promise you this is going to be one of your little go-to projects. It's just going to be something that, hey, you, you know, you bought somebody a pair of earrings and, you know, you just want to put it in something cute to give it to them. And this is this i promise you is going to be something that you'll make more than once because i know i've made these on many different occasions they're also great if you're having a party like for a child or something and you want to put little goodies inside and give them to the kids as they leave like little gift bag goodie bags and fill them with cute things um because they can you know hold quite a bit of things in here i mean if I, you know looking down at it i would say you could probably put maybe four Kit Kat bars with some Hershey's Kisses and some lollipops all in all in one. So that's kind of gives you an idea of like what you can put in there. And again, your little, you know, 
soaps that you make if, if you're into doing that. I haven't tried that yet. Um, but the possibilities are just endless and they are really, really sweet. And so I hope that you will make them and enjoy making them for every event that you have or go to it. You know, it's also a cute thing to bring. Um, you know, a lot of times if I'm invited somewhere now, not so much with COVID because we don't go anywhere. <laughs> um, but you know, if I was going to go to some, you know, to someone's house, like say I was going to go to my aunt's house for, for a holiday dinner, I would say, how many people do you have coming? You know, and she would say 10 or, you know, however many, and I would make each person something. Um, and then I would give them to her for her to give to her guests, um, just as a little hostess kind of a thing. So, and, and she loves, she loves that. In fact, when she did her little woman's, um, party, I made them for her. Um, it was still Christmas time, so it was in Christmas paper, but these are a lot of fun to do. And I hope that you will have fun making them. You could make these with your kids. Um, the hardest part is the hole punching because you have to punch through so many layers. So if you have, like I have arthritis, um, so it's hard for me to just use your regular hole punch. It won't punch it for me. I do have to use the big one, but if you can clamp down hard enough, you can get away with using a, a punch from Staples. I just can't um, punch that hard. But anyway, there you have it. I hope you like it. Another little thing to add to all of our projects. I'm just trying to use all the paper I have. So when I come up with something, I'm quick running in here making something. And I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I hope you'll do it and make it. And please show it on Crafting on a Budget um, Facebook page.com and make sure to go to crafting on a budget store.com for all your scrapbooking needs. I have it on good advice and good word um, from May that seam binding will be coming in, which I'm so super thrilled about. So that's great. Um, so much more is coming in. I talked to her yesterday. And when I tell you she had pile after pile of stuff that she hadn't even opened yet. So I can't even imagine what is going to be in those. But I'm very excited to see. That's for sure. And I'm sure she will do a video and show us all what all the goodies that she has got that's new for the shop. Um, as you know, it is one-stop shopping from paper to glue and everything glitter and everything in between. She has it. She has the stencils, the molds, the paper clay, the resin, the um, paints, you know, everything for mixed media that you can imagine. And every paper line you could think of, she has. And ones that you never even heard of, she has. Um, she's really set herself apart from a lot of different places. And what's wonderful about what she gets in is she not only gets in the one size, but she gets every size in. And I, I just love that. I love that she's getting all the different size papers in. It's... Um, really important when you are doing projects as you can see from the projects I've done to have the six by six or to have an eight by eight along with the 12 by 12 to have the journaling cards to have the ephemera if you can do it um, it really helps it really makes a difference and um, I, I just I like to be able to go to one website um, there's no scrapbooking stores around here. So I like to go to one website and get everything I need in one place and have it shipped to me. She ships so fast. Everything is pristine. You know how May is. I mean, if you know her from way back, I can remember being with her on Skype at like two or three in the morning when she was selling her laces and literally she'd be taking them out of the dryer, ironing them. Um, cutting apart pieces that she didn't think were uh, up to her standards. Um, so she really takes pride in what she sells and what she brings to you. And it's stuff that sometimes you've never seen it before, 
like a lot of these different paper lines that she's bringing in um, I haven't even heard of before and I'm so excited to work with them and she just really has put a lot of thought into bringing you the best and the best quality of everything and so I hope you'll stop there again it is scrapping and scrapping crafting on a budget store.com where you can order all this I do think she still has some of this paper line left if you want it there's still time to get it and save it for next year because next year I don't know if Frank Garcia is going to make another shabby chic Halloween paper and that's that's the one thing that you have to remember when these paper lines come out. It's very rare that an artist will duplicate what he's already, he or she has already done. Um, you may see some design elements that look similar, but the actual entirety of the line is going to look different. So if you like shabby chic and you like pink, this is the this is the Halloween line for you and get it while you still can because I know it is sold out everywhere because it came out uh, quite a while ago um, obviously because it was for Halloween and I'm, I'm just telling you now you will regret it if you don't get it <laughs> um, save it for next year if you don't have the time to make anything for Halloween just save it because you're gonna you're gonna feel like you missed out if because I really don't think we're ever gonna see a Halloween line that is designed for shabby chic people again and that's just my take on it I could be totally wrong but when you're into shabby chic you're not into to all the black and the dark and the scary and the creepy and that this has none of those elements in it this is just so cute so fun and i really think that you will like working with it so grab it while you can and you guys know what i'll say stay safe be well and until the next time bye for now